ma'am. Well, here's the good news, Jenna. If some of the stuff in this next story happens, it won't matter. <laughs> oh, NASA is weighing in on a terrifying new doomsday prediction. Russian scientists estimate that an asteroid the size of two football fields could hit Earth and destroy life as we know it. NASA is doing some research on ways to stop it. Tom Jones is a former astronaut, a Fox News contributor, and the author of Skywalking. This particular astro asteroid that the Russians are talking about, you're not particularly worried about it, Tom. No, hi. John, it's uh, not a worry. Apophis is an asteroid that's going to come close to us in 2029. And there's a one and a quarter million chance that it's going to hit us in 2036. And those numbers are pretty firm based on past asteroid tracking. They've been shared around the world and especially with the Russians. Uh, there's, uh, I think, a lot of hype about an asteroid like this. There's no chance it's going to hit the Earth. I think tracking next year and the year after is going to eliminate that possibility. The message, though, is that there are lots of undiscovered asteroids, John, that oh. we don't know about that might be headed toward us and we don't know about them. Yeah, and we don't see them either if they're on the other side of the sun, right? That's true. NASA has ground-based telescopes to look for asteroids. They can only, only look into the night sky away from the sun. And the best way to find them, uh, I was on a task force last fall working for NASA that recommended we launch a space telescope into an orbit that can look past the Earth and see the asteroids that are on the inside of the Earth's orbit closer to the sun that are normally invisible from ground-based telescopes. And it's cheap insurance. It's only about one-sixtieth of the NASA budget over the next 10 years. It would be a good investment to uh, protect the Earth. This kind of thing has happened before in Earth's history. There was that... Uh, that um uh, Siberian episode in 1908 that flattened all the trees and so forth, Tunguska. Now, that was an asteroid impact, right? And then also the big one that hit the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. How do you pronounce that? Chicxulub? Chicxulub, that's Chicxulub, right. Chicxulub, right. Uh, and the, Yuc uh, the uh, Yucatan explosion is, happens every once in a hundred million years. And NASA's been looking for the big objects that could cause an event like that. Good news is they're about to the 90% point on that search, and none of those big asteroids discovered are heading our way anytime soon. The smaller ones, the undiscovered ones like the Tunguska impact 100 years ago, there are about a million of those, and we only know about 1%. And that's where the space telescope searching in the infrared for those small objects comes in very handy. Meantime, our sun is not very happy uh, right now. There's some solar storms uh, belching out all kinds of nasty stuff that's affecting communications and so forth. What's that all about? Well, the sun's an active star, and we're only 93 million miles away. So these storms throw charged particles out. They hit our magnetosphere, the, uh, the magnetic field around the Earth, and they create the northern and southern lights, the aurora. They also disrupt satellite and ground communications, and it can even upset power grids. And they're a challenge in terms of the radiation put out to astronauts who might be traveling between the Earth and the Moon, for example, or to a, near, a nearby asteroid on an exploration mission. But if we're not on the poles, we don't have much to worry about? Uh, even at the space station, the radiation dose isn't increased significantly by these storms. It's more of a concern to communications and to managing surges in the power grid that could cause blackouts. That's a, a real practical problem. Tom Jones, I feel a little bit better than I did when I started talking to you. Thanks. I hope so, but we just need to pay that insurance policy, John. All right. We'll go for that. Thanks.